Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, July 31st, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday, Apple released its usual big update, patching pretty much all operating systems being currently supported by Apple. No real big surprise here. There is one already exploited vulnerability that can be used to bypass some kernel protections. So and so far, not a critical vulnerability, but one that would enable an attacker to fully compromise the system once they got a foothold on it. This vulnerability has been patched in newer operating systems back in March. And since then, Apple has been rolling out patches for older versions of the operating systems. Uh, This in particular now for older Mac OS and iOS versions. Total of 64 different vulnerabilities. None of them really sort of sticks out scanning through them. Many of them are actually denial of service vulnerabilities that cause systems or applications to crash. There are a couple privacy issues, like for example, with Find Me that are being addressed, and then a ton of WebKit vulnerabilities. So pretty normal patch day for Apple. That's sort of what we typically see. Regarding the WebKit vulnerabilities, if you are still running an older version of the operating system, Apple released a standalone update for Safari for those systems. So if you're in a current operating system, you will not see this Safari update. It's part of the operating system update. And then there is a lot of news the last couple of days about a VMware vulnerability that I actually haven't covered yet. And I want to explain a little bit the vulnerability. This particular VMware vulnerability shows up if you are using Active Directory in order to manage access to your VMware hypervisor. The problem is that as soon as you create an ESX admins group, then any user that's part of that group will automatically have full admin privileges over your VMware ESXi hypervisor. And apparently this issue is currently being exploited by ransomware gangs in order to gain access to these hypervisors. The problem, however, really is that they already have access to your Active Director environment in order to create that group. While they don't necessarily have to be full administrators or domain administrators in order to do this, they do need at least the privileges to create the group and add themselves to the group. So they're already in your environment. They already control a good part of your authentication system. Kind of logical that the next step would then be to actually gain access to systems that mean something that are critical to your business, and that's often this VMware hypervisor. A patch is available, so uh, definitely apply the patch if you haven't already, even though because it is sort of more approach escalation issue, the CVSS rating of uh, this particular vulnerability is only 6.8. And if you have a cell phone, you probably have uh, intentionally or not used voice over Wi-Fi at one point. Voice over Wi-Fi uses a Wi-Fi network, if available, instead of an LTE or 5G network. Well, simply uh, to save money and in some cases also to get a better connection because often in buildings you have a good Wi-Fi connection, but not so great uh, LTE or a 5G connection. And you probably may have wondered, well, how secure is this? And well, it's supposed to be quite secure. It uses essentially sort of an IPsec tunnel in order uh, to protect the data. But researchers at the University of Vienna have now found out that the parameters used in order to establish the tunnels are far from perfect. Apparently, in particular, devices from Chinese manufacturer CTE only use a small number, about a dozen different Diffie-Hellman keys. So brute forcing there is certainly a problem. Also, the Diffie-Hellman negotiation itself is often not sufficient, allowing for quite weak, like 768-bit keys. 
And CTE is not the only one affected. Uh, MediaTek, Xiaomi, Oppo, Realme, Vivo are other chipset manufacturers that, for example, allow an attacker to negotiate the connection at the lowest possible encryption strength. Updates to mitigate some of these issues should have been already applied by manufacturers as well as by mobile network operators. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. Thanks for liking this podcast. Thanks for recommending it to your friends, to your enemies, to your pets. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.